So you would call the 12 tribes a cult? I think you could use that word. I don't have, don't normally. I know, don't, I don't use that word. Sect is probably better, a little bit less uh, emotional, but definitely uh, high controlling, yeah, all that. If you're not in, you're out. If you're not, if you're not with me, you're against me. If you want to have a strong identity, create a strong enemy, and then you can really know who you are. everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Jen and this is Fundy Fridays on here on my channel. I talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism, usually doing my makeup, not doing that this week. And today's episode is going to be a little recap of a group called the 12 Tribes as well as some updates on them. You may have recently uh, seen them in the news because they may or may not have been involved in starting a forest fire. I have done a video on the 12 Tribes before and I do highly recommend that you watch it because it goes into more details on their beliefs as well as their run-ins with the law. So who are these people? Well, the 12 Tribes is a fundamentalist Christian cult and they have branches all over the world and they are known for their unusual blend of a traditional hippie aesthetic with shocking beliefs that include racism, anti-Semitism, and a boatload of child abuse. Specifically this boat. Yeah, that's right. These motherfuckers have a sailboat and they aren't afraid to use it. Move over Scientology. 12 Tribes is coming for your wig. The reason why this group dresses the way they do is because they're actually an offshoot of the Jesus People Movement, which by the way is my favorite kind of phenomenon. The Jesus People Movement consisted of baby boomers that wanted the fashion, hairstyles, and jam bands of the hippie movement without all that pesky free love and social justice. So instead they went the opposite way and just doubled down harder on their fundamentalism. Quite a few few groups that were offshoots of the Jesus People movement, including some that we've covered on this channel, like the People of Praise and the Family International. And honestly, this whole thing is kind of like a modern day equivalent of today's cool, fashionable, hipster Christian vibes that we see with young evangelicals. You know, those charismatic megachurch Christians that rock the iconic look of a white Pacific Northwest bisexual, yet they remain Bible-thumping bigots. It's almost like fashion trends with fundies can be a red herring. But what do I know? It's not like Ginger Duggar is wearing contemporary modern fashions and showing cleavage nowadays. The other thing that the 12 Tribes is known for are their famous yellow delis. These are quaint little diners operated by the cult and staffed by volunteers. And by staffed by volunteers, I mean exploiting the unpaid labor of cult members for increased profit. Some other businesses that the 12 Tribes run that that you might be familiar with. Parchment Press, a printing company that offers printing and printing accessories. COJ Construction, which is based in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Commonwealth Construction, another construction company in the southwestern U.S. Greener Formulas, a soap and body care research and development firm with ties to other businesses, like their Common Sense Farm, um, which has a documentary made about it on YouTube that is linked in my description. But the Common Sense Farm makes soap and body care products. Simon the Tanner, a chain of shoe stores, Tribal Trading and Organic Foods Distribution Company, Common Ground Cafe Restaurants, Tribal Trading and Organic Foods Distribution Company based in Spain, and also with that they have the, the Mate Factor, which is a Yerba Mate import company that also runs two cafes in Manitoba Springs, Colorado, and Savannah, Georgia. While I've never been to one of these delis myself, there is one in my state, and a former co-worker of mine did stay with them for a while. Uh, he was already like a wandering soul type and apparently quit the job because he wanted to go be naked in national parks. So seems fitting. From all reports, these Yellow Deli restaurants are apparently very clean, the food is tasty, and they are incredibly nice and welcoming to everyone. While they do not proselytize traditionally, they are not afraid to strike up a conversation with you at their restaurant and give you some of their reading materials. It's not illegal to operate a Christian business. If we're gonna let Chick-fil-A put Bible verses on all their cups and condiments, then I guess we have to let the 12 tribes do their thing. Many of these yellow delis and other businesses are located near college campuses for recruitment purposes. People who are going through big changes in their lives are highly susceptible to cult brainwashing because they're already going through turmoil. They're looking for a new outlook on life. And here comes these hippies with their delicious bread trying to tell you about how they have this 
alternative way of living that will help you, you know, commune with God. As crazy as it sounds, I do understand the appeal. They have a groovy retro style. They have fresh air, farm to table food, a job working with your hands, worshiping God in a simple idyllic setting, and you don't have to make any choices. There's no money, possessions, or class. If you don't look much into it, 12 tribes sounds like the perfect communal way of living. Except for all that racism and child abuse. And then they also started a forest fire. Maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Directly from Wikipedia, the 12 tribes formerly known as Vine Christian Community Church, the Northeast Kingdom Community Church, the Messianic Communities, and the Community Apostolic Order is a new religious movement founded by Gene Spriggs, now known as Yonick, that sprang out of the Jesus People Movement in 1972 in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The group calls itself an attempt to recreate the first century church as described in the Book of Acts. The name 12 tribes is also derived from a quote of the Apostle Paul in Acts 26-7. The group has ignited controversy and garnered unfavorable attention from the media, the anti-cult movement, and governments. As I previously mentioned, this group has a number of vehicles that they utilize for various expeditions and activities. Here is their famous bus, the Peacemaker, and the 12 tribes uses this bus to tailgate rock shows and strike up conversations with vulnerable young people as a means to recruit them into their cult. Upon joining this group, one would give up all personal possessions, change their name, and work long hours of grueling physical labor on their many farms for no money. And if you want to get married, you got to go through their uh, interesting process where your wedding is actually a thing called a pre-enactment. And you know what? Let me just show you. I would not I don't know if it's fully hit yet. I mean, I'm very happy for her, and she's a wonderful girl, and I wish them the best, but it happens remarkably fast. I will praise you for eternity. Our son came to us, and she came to her parents, and they both told us that they were attracted to the other, you know, and they didn't go to each other either, and they told us, and. So we told them to sit on it for a little while <laughs> and just let it wait because they were pretty young. first part of the wedding is more like a, and I think we actually came up with the term, I don't know, we, a pre-enactment. And I know there's reenactments of, but we actually do as a, it's a play or a pageant of what we see will happen in the end times when Jesus returns. So that first whole section of the wedding is like a play. And it's not really my wedding so much. I'm more playing the part of the bride of Messiah. I regret in my previous video not ripping into this group hard enough for their beliefs. Um, they actually practice what is called Messianic Judaism, which is a misnomer. Um, it's not a Jewish religion. The whole idea behind this movement is a bunch of Christians that like to bastardize versions of Jewish traditions while simultaneously perpetuating anti-Semitic teachings such as that the Jews are collectively responsible for the death of Christ. And this whole movement of Messianic Judaism has actually been growing in popularity over the years. I saw a lot of it this past spring. I'm looking at you, Carissa Collins, with your fucking candy Seder. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. The 12 tribes believe that in order for the Messiah to return, the church needs to be restored to its original form as described in Acts 2, 38 through 42 and Acts 4, 32 through 37. This restoration is not merely the restoration of the first century church, but the creation of a new Israel, which would consist of 12 tribes, which are located in 12 geographic regions. Part of this restoration is the return to observing the Sabbath, maintaining some of the Mosaic law, including dietary laws and the festivals. This interpretation of the prophesied restoration of Israel combined with the perceived immorality in the world leads the group to believe that the end times has arrived though no date has been set. This group also has very troubling views about race such as teaching their followers that the Bible holds that black people are servants of whites and that slavery was a marvelous opportunity for black people. It's easy to find secondhand reports of these racist beliefs although you wouldn't be able to find it on the 12 tribes own website. Actually their website has been scrubbed of quite a bit of material and replaced with like a completely different layout since my last video um and makes me wonder if they're trying 
to hide something. Maybe it's all the child abuse. My name is Carolyn, and I was a former disciple of the 12 tribes. 12 tribes has long battled accusations of being a cult. It's a lot like a toxic, abusive relationship. Um, the way people are pulled in. Carolyn Figuera lived with a commune in Savannah, Georgia. In Massachusetts, 12 tribes has properties in Milton, Raynham, Hyannis, and Plymouth, where the I-team visited the popular Blue Blinds Bakery, now called the Yellow Deli. It's a 12 tribes chain where Figuera worked in her city. What is going on behind that nice looking exterior? They control your logic and your, and your thinking and they control your money. Recruiting materials were scattered throughout where we sat. A book called A Brand New Culture says we don't make decisions apart. An idea you came up with on your own, then then that's a sign that it's, it's from the evil one, it's from the devil. FBI documents show 12 tribes communes across the country have been targets of federal child abuse investigations, but none has resulted in charges. Several years ago, OSHA looked into a child labor complaint at a 12 tribes construction site here in Plymouth. Again, no fines. But Figuera says hitting children with sticks was a regular practice at her commune. They're placed everywhere so parents can just grab them whenever a a kid needs to be disciplined. When we asked the community about the accusations, a spokesperson responded, we aren't strangers to controversy, and many of these allegations are quite old and tired. Figuera, who's Dominican American, also says 12 tribes' teachings are racist. Black people need to live a life of slavery or in servitude to white man in order to redeem themselves from their curse. But a 12 Tribes spokesperson told us we continue every day trying to make a home for the lonely and show God's love to people of all backgrounds and races. Members of the 12 Tribes subject the children in the group to constant, prolonged, sadistic beatings for the littlest of infractions, up to and including being silly. It's really given Michael Pearl runs a summer camp vibes. In the 80s, one of the compounds was famously raided, although there wasn't enough proof to convict anybody of anything, so the kids got returned and they actually celebrate that day as one of their big holidays in the group. Since then, there has also been several investigations in other countries, including in Germany and Australia. This group is really good at skirting the law and has been able to continue getting away with child abuse for decades with one technicality after the other. This sect believes openly in spanking disobedient children to drive out the devil. Its website insists, we know that some people consider this aspect of our life controversial, but we have seen from experience that discipline keeps a child from becoming mean-spirited and disrespectful of authority. Sven, a 19-year-old former 12 Tribes member who who ran away at the age of 14 recalls how he was beaten for imitating an aeroplane in the hands of one of the sex educators. He was beaten for days at two o'clock in the morning because he kept wetting his bed. They said I had lost control of myself. I was told I would die if I tried to escape. I was a child who was not allowed to be a child. This article that I'm reading is specifically referring to a German documentary that was like an expose of all the child abuse. They have undercover footage of little babies being beaten for hours, child labor being used on the farm. The the film shows how children are made to get up at 5 a.m. and stand through an hour-long prayer session. They are obliged to labor with adults in the community's farm plots and workshops. They attend the community's own strictly religious schools. It's normal to be beaten every day, said Christian, another former member who escaped five years ago. This film also shows disturbing images of a baby boy being forcefully grasped by the back of the head in a practice referred to by sect members as restraining. There are so many teachings that keep you from being who you are. They keep you from being human, a former member said. You get so absorbed in the teachings that you lose your emotions and your ability to respond to situations. They seem like a tight-knit family, but you just don't know all the misery behind those eyeballs. And not surprising to anyone, this cult um, does not take healthcare seriously at all. And in many situations, people have died or come very close to death because they did not treat their illnesses with the severity that they needed to be. You were an elder, yeah. so when people were ill, yeah. what, what was your role? Um... As an elder and a shepherd, you would go and you would um, find out if there was anything in them that they needed to get out. Like what? And you could call that confessing your sins. You'd been watching pornography. You had um, 
I don't know, you'd been mean to your wife or you'd been insubordinate to your husband, you'd uh, hit your children too hard. And that would be causing the illness, would yeah, be the Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. But if someone's seriously ill... Then uh, we'd pray for them. We didn't say you couldn't go to the hospital, but it had to get to a point of urgency where there's some danger. I know of a girl who almost died. And... Um, by the time they got her there and they got her a blood transfusion, she was nearly gone. So does an elder get to make that call? Elders, you're going to, uh, when it gets sort of critical, like in a birth, we would always have a gopher guy um, with a vehicle that was full of petroled up and the keys in his hand, and he knew where the hospital was. That, right. that reluctance is dangerous. It takes you too close to the line. And, but that's how we did it. We were all in. We were all in. We actually were believing that he was going to come through. By he, Han stand. means God. And when he didn't come through, then generally it's your fault. Another major event that happened to this group was this year in January. <laughs> two weeks ago, um, Gene Spriggs, the founder of 12 Tribes, actually died. He died in North Carolina on January 11th and he was 83 years old. There hasn't been any major statements from the group regarding what they're going to do now. I think most of them are just going to act like nothing has happened. Um, most of these communities are self-sustaining, so it's not like they need Gene for day-to-day -day operations anyway. But he was treated like a prophet, so I can imagine that I'm sure people are grieving him right now or freaking out. And then, of course, why I made this video in the first place, a massive a massive forest fire ripped through Colorado and it's called the Marshall Fire. It may or may not have been started on a 12 tribes property. The investigation as to why exactly it started um, could take months according to authorities, but one of the reasons why this fire was so incredibly devastating was because there was hurricane force winds, 100 miles an hour plus. It was blowing the fire everywhere. A thousand homes were burnt down. The fire went across 6,000 acres. It jumped a highway. And another problem, which is not the 12 tribes fault, but this is just an aside, the emergency services were extremely lacking. There were many, many, many people who didn't even hear sirens. Lots of people barely had time to escape. People didn't have time to get their pets. And if you watch any of the footage, it's just really devastating. And I can only imagine just the horrors of being somebody who doesn't have shelter um, in these types of situations or transportation. We still don't know how this fire started. There's been lots of theories. Some people say down power lines. I've heard an underground mine fire. I personally think it was probably just poor fire safety at the 12 tribes. They probably haven't been educated on the proper ways to um, take care of fire. And just because this fire was an accident doesn't mean that they aren't responsible. You know, if you're in a deadly car crash and you kill somebody, even if it was an accident, somebody is still dead and there needs to be a person that is held legally responsible for that. Today out at Highway 93 and Highway 170 near the point where the fire started, we saw investigators walking the edge of the burn area this afternoon. This is just south of the property where yesterday we showed you video of a shed seen burning, the property where fire investigators appear to be concentrating their time. Boulder County Sheriff acknowledged this week that the property connected to a religious sect is part of the Marshall Fire investigation. That group is called 12 Tribes. It's been the subject of scrutiny over the years. Here's Jeremy Hohola. You may have seen or even dined at the Yellow Deli on Pearl Street in Boulder. It's one of more than 20 locations around the world operated by 12 tribes, a religious sect with 3,000 members globally. The group claims it lives in self-sustaining communities with a focus on a lifestyle that reflects the traditions of the early Christian church. Some members live just south of Boulder, right where this video was shot by witnesses on the day the Marshall Fire exploded. Boulder Sheriff Joe Pelly acknowledged this property connected to the group is part of the investigation into how the fire started. To be clear, 12 tribes in Boulder has not been criminally implicated in the Marshall Fire. I found a sign at the Yellow Deli saying it's closed because of the fire, but a man answered the door and wouldn't comment. He referred me to the Sheriff's Department. But former members say behind closed doors, they tear families apart. 12 Tribes has been the focus of media and law enforcement scrutiny over its 50-year history. It's been called a cult by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Former members have come forward making allegations of child labor violations. We are unaware of any criminal allegations against the group in Boulder. With the potential start of the destruction beginning on its property, the group is now even under more scrutiny. 
For next, I'm Jeremy Hohola. Now that I think about it, it must be cosmically aligned that all this stuff is happening right now in the Fundy world. Colton glass houses shouldn't start forest fires. Between the untimely death of several religious leaders and the legal reckoning with sex abuse in the church, I don't know, it just feels like a cultural earthquake is happening around us. The spotlight is hot on the 12 tribes right now because of the forest fire and Gene Spriggs' death, and who knows what the future holds for the organization. As long as they are able to continue making money from their various businesses, they can probably maintain financial stability for years to come. In the U.S. at least, the law is written in such a way to give predatory religious organizations plenty of room to operate with impunity. The best we can do is continue to educate ourselves and make sure we're mindful of our communities. Shame on you 12 tribes for abusing children, subjugating women, exploiting people for labor, and just being all around racist and anti-semitic. Fuck you 12 tribes. And I bet your bread isn't even that good. Well, thank you all for watching this video. Thought I'd give you guys a little update video because um, I've been getting tagged a lot in news about the Marshall Fire. And it was one of my older videos, so I probably needed to update it anyway. Do you like my little hair thingy? This is just a like ribbon from another shirt that I didn't think looked cute on the shirt. So I wanted to do this and I think it kind of gives a little 60s vibe, which, you know, we're going for in the video. This shirt is from Torrid and... Um, I'm wearing all Trixie Cosmetics, if you can believe that. Uh, <laughs> and um, remember to consensually smash that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment for the algorithm. Follow me on social media. And by social media, I mean Instagram because I don't really post anywhere else. I have merch available if you are just totally obsessed with me. And um, I hope you're all having a lovely time. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye. The advancement of religion is one of the four heads of charity. So, on that argument... No tax? No tax.